Ta. Joining me now is Latasha Brown, co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Latasha, I know you've been uh, at a couple of protests today. Uh, I just want to get your reaction to Brian Kemp sneaking off and signing the bill. Let me show uh, our, 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 our viewers here. A Democratic representative named uh, State Representative Park Cannon tried to get in where Kemp was signing the bill and was actually arrested as Kemp signed this bill in secret. Your thoughts uh, on, on all of that? They are out of control. All that Representative Cannon was doing is going in, attempting to go in while he signed the bill. She's a representative. She was duly elected in this state. They are absolutely out of control. They have lost their minds. What we're seeing happening in the state of New Georgia is so egregious around voting rights. What we're seeing is we're seeing the resurgence of those that think that they're going to bring Jim Crow back, and they're not. And so what you're seeing, even with this bill, to, to make it illegal and criminalize groups like ours that provide water and snacks for people who are standing in line for three, four, five, six, even 11 hours, it is a shame. We, are, we should be ashamed. We should hang our head tonight to say that this is a democracy. Uh, you know, it's hard for me to understand the it, making it illegal to, to provide food and snacks for people standing in line. It, what is the explanation for that? Is the idea here that they want people to be hungry and thirsty and be so abused physically that they get out of line? Is that the goal here? I don't get it. The explanation is anything that can deter black voters. This is not what we saw in these bills that happened. You know, this was in response to the historic black turnout that happened this last election cycle. Instead of really addressing the issues to prevent people from standing in lines for hours, instead of expanding access, bringing more machines online, strengthening the process, they're doing absolutely the opposite. Everything in their power to actually deter voters for participating in the process. Ryan Kemp has been voter suppression in chief. He sits in his office right now because he cheated and suppressed the vote in 2018. But just as we came out in greater force in 2020, we're going to do that again. And we're going to remember this at the polls, but it's not over yet. Uh, let me read Stacey Abrams' statement. She put out a statement saying, Georgia Republicans' shameful efforts to suppress the vote and seize electoral power through SB 202 demonstrate how critical the fight is for voting rights remains. Um, every business, political, and civic leader must stand up and make their opposition to these desperate anti-democratic laws clear. As the FBI continue to round up seditionists who spilled blood to defend a lie about our elections, Republican state leaders willfully undermine democracy by giving themselves authority to overturn results they do not like. Now more than ever, Americans must demand and federal action to protect voting rights as we continue to fight against these blatantly unconstitutional efforts that are nothing less than Jim Crow. She's referring in part of this, um, Latasha, to a part of the bill that would essentially allow the state legislature to overturn elections. Uh, they want to allow the Republican legislature, if they don't like the results of the next presidential election, to simply hand the election to the person they prefer. Um, I was at the, the Tyler Perry studio opening, um, and one of the other people who was there in uh, Atlanta uh, was the governor. Brian Kemp, who stood around there as if he was some sort of an ally to the film community and to the African-American community. Um, you have started a campaign to pressure businesses, uh, corporations, companies that are based in Georgia um, to get on the right side of history regarding these kinds of laws. Do you Absolutely. believe that a boycott of Georgia is in order now that Brian Kemp has signed this law? I absolutely do. I think that all things are, are, should be considered on the table. The bottom line is, 56 years ago, there were black people in this country from my native city of Selma that died right, for the right to vote. It's one thing to say that we have policy differences and for people to see different aspects of policy, but the fundamental access to the ballot, that is a right that is guaranteed us. And so what we're seeing Republicans not only be racist, but be anti-democratic. And then there are companies that all of these companies, that we're looking at the Metro Atlanta Chamber that came out with a water down, very disrespectful, I think, statement today, it's that represent companies like Delta and Home Depot and Delta Airlines, Home Depot and Coca-Cola, like they said that they made these statements around racial equity. This should be low-hanging fruit. This is a clear issue that is targeted at black voters to marginalize our vote and really be able to weaken democracy. And so we are. We've launched a campaign just this evening, right before I came on the air. There's a coalition of folks that are at the airport that are protesting Delta Airlines right now, saying, you are a homegrown organization, a business that we serve. You have more black workers than any other airline. How dare you not stand with us to make sure that we fight and protect voting rights in the state of Georgia?
Yeah, I mean, dollars are, are also a, a powerful uh, tool. Uh, and uh, the, the film industry in Georgia, let's just be clear, it is the new Hollywood. It is a multi-billion dollar industry uh, where film and TV is being uh, done there. And the people who live there and are resident there, are it's being made harder for them to actually vote to change the government in Georgia. Uh, the Brennan Center has uh, locked out, has, has counted 253 proposed voting restrictions in 43 states that are similar to what Brian Kemp did. Uh, this is now on a national scale, Latasha. What can be done? Because you have some recalcitrance in the United States Senate, people like Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema. What can be done? Because this is not going to stop at Georgia. This is going to be everywhere Republicans have legislative control. This is a national movement. This is really a question around democracy. This is a question around, are we going to go backwards or are we going to move forward? That Georgia showed up for America. We expect that America will stand and show up for us as well and all voters in this country. And so we need to immediately pass H.R. 1, H.R. 4. Um, we literally need to have stronger federal legislation that is going to put the teeth back into the Voting Rights Act. We need to make sure that we're expanding so that these states that are actually passing these draconian laws, that they're held accountable. And we're also going to go to the court system. You know, it is a shame that we're in this space that we're in right now. If we're talking about America as a democracy, then we have to make it be so. Let, let, let's just be clear for everybody who's watching this right now. What Republicans are saying is they're going to make it torture for you to vote in line by having fewer machines, beat up machines, places where in, in urban centers, places where black folks live, suburbs where black people live, make it impossible or torture for you to vote in line. And then they're going to make it impossible for you to vote by mail. They're going to lock off every way that you can vote. And then even if you survive all of those restrictions and you finally get your vote in, then they're going to say ways out. We're just not going to count what you did because we don't like who you voted for, so we're just going to give it to the other guy. This is the end of democracy in America. This is the beginning of the South, the South Africa strategy. This is minority rule. This is saying we will rule uh, over the objections of the majority of the American people. This is the most serious thing that we've seen happen since the January 6th siege. It's another kind of siege. It is absolutely bizarre, and it is uh, I will say it's un-American. It's probably kind of in a way. <laughs> it's, it's old school American. It's Jim Crow American. <laughs> Latasha <laughs> Brown, who is in this. Apps, apps, no doubt about that. Latasha Brown, thank you for being in this fight. Um, we will stay with this uh, as long as they want to stay.